Hi YouTubers, it's Lonnie Clark again, Nuts for Art, and I'm going to be reading more of Chapter 2. I'll pick up where we left off on page 13. Chapter 2, uh, the chapter is Biological Effects of Radiation. From the book written by Tamplin and Goffman, Population Control Through Nuclear Pollution. Uh, we have to get to page 27 to finish up chapter 2, so I don't think we'll get to it tonight. Um, but I'll get through several pages and I'll make an effort not to read beyond 12 minutes or something like that. I think it's hard to listen to somebody read. If you guys want to give me some feedback, if you think it's better longer to read more, but I mean, I could probably read for a half an hour, but I personally think that's probably boring. So anyways, I'm going to take off my glasses and see if I can read better this time. Last year, we were endeavoring to make some reasonable sense out of the steadily accumulating evidence of additional forms of cancer being added to those proven to be produced by radiation of humans. We came to the realization that almost all the major forms of human cancer were by then already known to be produced by ionizing radiation. So that was written in 1970. Radiation causation had already been proved for those types of cancers which make up 90% of the cancer mortality in the United States. For all intents and purposes, it would hardly matter whether the remaining rarer or minor forms of cancer could also be produced by radiation. So it became possible to state a primary principle or a law of radiation production of cancer in humans. That principle or law states, all forms of human cancer are in all probability induced by ionizing radiation. Wow. Following this important generalization, the very next question which arises concerns the quantitative aspects of the problem. Our question can be restated now as how many extra cancers or leukemias will be produced per rat of radiation delivered to human beings? Examination of the data accumulated from several sources demonstrated that a particular dose of ionizing radiation increased all cancers and leukemias approximately in proportion to the spontaneous incidence of those particular cancers or leukemias. By spontaneous, it is here meant that those cancers and leukemias occurring without the insult of man-made radiation. This important generalization that radiation production, I'm sorry, this important generalization that radiation produces cancer and leukemia in proportion to spontaneous occurrence rate can, be, can best be appreciated by reference to specific cancers and leukemias. In the following table, it is shown the evidence of it is shown the evidence concerning cancer and leukemia production by radiation. The data are presented in two ways: a, as the percent increase in cancer occurrence rate for each rat accumulated by the exposed persons, and b, as the number of rats of exposure that would result in producing a number of cancers equal to the occurring spontaneously each year. This latter number is commonly referred to as the doubling dose of radiation for cancer or leukemia production. If one rat of radiation produces a 1% increase in occurrence rate of a particular cancer, then 100 rads is the doubling dose. If one rad produces a 2% increase in occurrence rate, then 50 rads is the doubling dose. One simply divides 100 by the percent increase to arrive at the doubling dose for any cancer. So I'm going to show you this little table. I'll put my glasses back on so that you can see it and I can see if it's going to show. But this, here I'll let you guys feast on that for a little second. You see what they're talking about, the incident rates of the cancers? So, for example, this is the table one. How radiation increases occurrence rates of various cancers and leukemias in adults. So for leukemia, the percent increase in occurrence rate for each rat accumulated is 2.2%. 
The number of rads of radiation required to double spontaneous cancer occurrence rate is only 45 rads. So there's, I won't go through the whole list. I think that would get boring, but you can kind of see that it's a really, it's astounding. For such an array of widely divergent human organ systems, already including a very firmly established evidence for nearly all the major forms of human cancers, it is amazing indeed that there is such a small range for the estimated doubling dose. Correspondingly, there is also a very small range in the estimated percentage increase in occurrence rate for accumulated RAD for each of these widely different organ sites in which cancers arise. Cancers vary as to the latent period between the receiving of radiation and the clinical observation of the cancer. Many of the forms of cancer shown in the table have long latency periods. As a result, the true increase in cancer due to radiation will be even higher than shown in the table for the full effect has not yet been seen in some of the human groups exposed to radiation. Therefore, we have concluded that the true average doubling dose for all forms of cancer produced by radiation will not be larger than 50 rads, and consequently, for each rad of radiation, there is not less than a 2% increase over the spontaneous occurrence rate for each form of cancer. Thus, the second important generalization or law arrived at is the following. All forms of cancer and leukemia are increased by ionizing radiation in direct proportion to the spontaneous occurrence of such cancers or leukemia. Best estimates at this time suggest a 2% annual increase in incident rate for every form of human cancer and leukemia for every rat of radiation accumulated in the human adult. Whether the value of 2% increase will finally be the precisely correct one depends upon further data accumulation. What is of the moment is that the increase is indeed very large. Some forms of cancer are spontaneously much more rare than others. Previous estimates of radiation hazards were too low. This law or generalization states that both the common and the rare forms of cancer are increased by about 2% in occurrence rate for each accumulated RAD. Early attention of radiation scientists focused on leukemia, which is fortunately relatively rare. But we must now realize that all other forms of cancer combined occur approximately 20 times as frequently as leukemia. Wow. Thus, if one rat of total body radiation will produce two cases of leukemia per year in a particular group of humans, that same radiation dose will produce 20 times 2 or 40 extra cases of all other forms of cancer per year. This is the real import of the second generalization above. And this is the reason we ourselves were so shocked by the implications of our observations that had led to the generalization. The radiation cancer hazard was thereby shown to be huge in contrast with previous estimates, 20-fold higher than leukemia alone. Estimates that were all falsely low simply because leukemia became manifest in radiation exposed humans earlier than after the radiation did in many of the diverse forms of cancers. This generalization leads directly and simply to the estimation, I'm going to read that again. This generalization leads directly and simply into the estimation of the devastating effect upon human life if the current FRC guidelines for population exposure are allowed to remain in force. These guidelines have never had any more than a by guess or by gosh justification. About all that ever was claimed even by the Federal Radiation Council itself was the hope that somehow the benefits to be derived from allowing human beings to be radiated to this extent would outweigh the harm that could accrue. That harm from cancer and leukemia alone is easily estimated from the generalizations below. One rad 
one red increases all forms of cancer in adults by 2%. Federally allowable dose accumulation is 0.17 rads per year or 5 rads from birth to 30 years. 5 times 2 equals 10. So accumulating 5 rads leads to a 10% increase in cancer and leukemia occurrence. Since approximately 320 cancers occur spontaneously each year in the United States, a 10% increase would mean some 32,000 extra cancers plus leukemias each year in the U.S. In examining the available data on radiation induction of human cancer, additional profoundly important and shocking evidence was found. Two supremely important groups of humans provided this evidence, irradiated children and fetuses irradiated in utero. For the children irradiated during infancy in the region of the thyroid gland, thyroid cancer was later found to be caused by this irradiation. Instead of 50 rads being required to double the spontaneous cancer incidence, as in adults, it turned out that only approximately 5 to 10 rads were required. This indicated a strikingly greater sensitivity of children in susceptibility to radiation injury. For infants in utero, the situation is even much worse. From the great ongoing work of Stewart and Neal, important new evidence recently published shows that all forms of childhood cancer and leukemia are doubled by extremely small doses of radiation. If this radiation is delivered in the first 13 weeks of pregnancy, only one-third of a rat is sufficient to double the occurrence of childhood cancers and leukemia. Oh my God. Later in pregnancy, approximately one and a half rads causes such a doubled rate of occurrence of cancer and leukemia. All of this evidence indicates exquisite sensitivity of the infant in utero, even compared to already highly sensitivity of children to radiation injury. Moreover, these important studies of Stewart demonstrate the validity of the assumption of the International Commission of Radiological Protection that any amount of radiation, no matter how small, is harmful to human beings. It is not at all surprising that infants in utero should appear most sensitive to irradiation, children next in sensitivity, and adults third, but by no means low. This is precisely the order in which these groups stand in terms of the fraction of their cells undergoing cell division at any time, and much evidence suggests that these cells are most susceptible to cancer induction. Wow. I'm going to stop here. We're not quite through, but we're at 13 minutes. I think that's a good break. The next subtitle is General Laws of Cancer Induction by Radiation. We're on page 17, so I guess we read four pages. Um, I think it's better to read a little bit each night instead of just blah, 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 keep going. Um, so I'm going to keep reading. I don't know if anybody's going to keep watching this, but I'll tell you what. This is a really valuable book that I'm finding fascinating. And um, I hope you guys keep your spirits up because we can find solutions. Evidently, my guess would be that Kevin Blanche is exactly right. They know exactly what the fuck is going on. The people that have been studying this, that have been hiding the information, know way, 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 way more than what they've been leading on to. But it's a big fat cash cow for them. And they're not about to give up their riches. And they don't care who, who dies and who lives. So we're going to have to press on because the time is near. They're really about to just genocide the whole fucking planet. And I'm personally not willing to let that happen. So I'm going to keep reading and... Hopefully we can put our brains together and start coming up with ideas and ways to uh, something. We've got to think of something, you guys. Like, I don't know what it's going to take. Kevin's going to start the walk along the coast to highlight, you know, we're going to try to get some media out there and start talking about the Pacific Genocide. 
talk about the consciousness of being in love with our planet and being in love with each other. And that's what we need. <laughs> Show some love. But um, I don't know if any of you guys watched the Fuku One Live stuff, but that place is falling apart. Fukushima is falling apart. The radiation is seriously out of control there to the point where the whole place is falling apart. I don't know. I feel like a stunned victim. Um, but I'm going to press on. I'm not going to be depressed. I'm just going to move on and we're going to keep going. And and I really believe that we're here on purpose. And I really believe if we stick to it, reading this information will bring some light bulbs on. And we'll be able to figure something out and stop them immediately before they kill us all and kill our grandchildren. So anyways... Um, Peace out, you guys, and I'll talk to you tomorrow night. Ciao.